Holy cow, it's been a while since I've done this. <gasps> what did I get all over this book? Mm. Oh, my dear sweet Jesus. <gasps> did my dog pee on this? Y'all. I think this is dried up dog pee on my book, cannoli. <gasps> well, at least he finds creative spots to do that. <clears throat> so much for reselling these back to um, pals. Hey guys, it's Katie. Welcome back to my channel. It has been a super, super long time since I have sat down to film. I have not done like a sit down filming video since I've moved and that's now been going on two months. So anyhow, I have a lot of stuff to catch up on. A lot of my typical content that I would film, like book reviews, empties, hint, hint, those are the two videos I'm filming right now. And then I have some other ideas in the works for stuff that I want to sit down. I have been doing a lot of vlogs on my channel, so if you're at all interested in those, check them out. Today, I'm here to bring you some book reviews on some recent reads of mine. To be honest, I don't even know if... There might be like one or two other books that I've also read since we spoke last about books, but as of now, these are the ones I'm here to talk about. I try to do these like individual book reviews, but we're just gonna lump them all into one, okay? We'll start with the one that I read the, the longest ago. And yeah, if you missed that little intro there, um, I discovered that I'm pretty sure there's dog pee on these books. So dog pee dries really strangely, just for the record. This book is called The Last Mrs. Parish by Liv Constantine. This is a book from Reese's Book Club. So if you're interested, like, you know, if that usually gives you any indication that it's good, wanted to let you know. Let's talk about this book. So I'm gonna start with giving it an overall rating. If I had to rate this book out of five, this was actually one of my favorite reads of the year so far. I'm gonna give this guy a solid like 4.5. That's right, I'm gonna give it a 4.5. So this is the story of this woman who, oh man, it's so hard to describe without giving anything away, but essentially there is this married couple Daphne Parrish and Mr. Parrish, I forget what the husband's name is, but you know, they're married and they live this blessed lifestyle where they're super wealthy and they live in New York City and they have two daughters, yada, yada, yada. And then there's this other character named Amber and let's just say that she gets herself mixed up with this family through lies and deceit. She has a mission to insert herself into this family and she like really aspires to have this rich and famous lifestyle and I'm just gonna leave it at that but I will say so it's definitely one of those kind of like psychological um what's the word like uh what's the word like home I feel like that's a genre where it's like a a thriller having to do with like interpersonal relationships and like what is the freaking term oh my gosh if you guys know what it is like write it down below but there's like a theme of um like residential that's not it but it's that vibe it's like thrillery you know you're kind of following along but the thing is is that there are multiple twists and turns and so not only do I like that genre in general the writing was really good and it it just was was really well written it was just really interesting really like fun to ride the coattails of these different characters and see where they all go and then like I said there were a couple of twists and turns that I didn't see coming and I highly recommend it. I would reread it. I mean it's like a great summer beach read. Obviously it's winter right now but I would say this would be a perfect like weekend in with hot cocoa or like a vacation read. You can read it really quickly. It's really good. Next up, this is called The Art of Racing in the Rain by Garth Stein. This is one that I had been recommended actually years ago by a good friend and she told me that it was this story written through a dog's perspective. At the time, I wasn't necessarily a super big dog person, but I kind of filed it away with like, okay, that'll be a cute book, whatever. Now I'm this massive dog person and so I was like, oh, I should really read that. And then when they announced that they were making a movie of it, that was my trigger or my cue to be like, yes, you need to read it before you see the film, which I did see the film after. 
So this one, let's see, if I had to rate this out of five overall, I'm going to give this one a three, maybe like a 3.2. I liked it. It was good. I would not necessarily reread it. Again, I wish I, I like to do my book reviews right after I read them. So it's been a couple months now, but it was very creative and clever the way that it was written through a dog's perspective. If you are a dog person, there are little cute things that you will really just love about that. It's very kind of endearing and heartfelt and funny the way he says certain things. It is about the reason it's called Racing in the Rain. The dog's owner is a race car driver. And then again, I don't want to spoil anything, but he goes through some stuff. He has a wife and then he has a daughter and they grew, they go through some stuff, some, some health issues and some family drama issues. Hey, cannoli, I found your pee on the books. The other question is like, how long has this been here? Okay. Normally he doesn't have accidents in the house. So I'm hoping this was like an old accident. Oh my God. Do I see more pee right there? Cannoli. I'll investigate later. This book had some, come here, buddy. Come here. It had some plot points that were a little frustrating and it had some plot points that seemed a little maybe unrealistic. I don't know. And it dragged on in certain parts. I mean, I don't mean to be like, I really did like it. I just, I just wouldn't necessarily, I didn't love it. I didn't race through this book. I didn't feel this super deep connection with it. Perhaps if you were like really into race car driving for some reason, you would have even more of a connection to it. Um, I enjoyed it. I'm happy I read it. And then the film, they did a good job with the movie. There were a couple of main differences with like the climax and some of the problems that he, the main character has with his wife's parents. I'll just let you know that he has issues with the parents, um, the little girl's grandparents. Like they changed that up in the movie. The movie was heart-wrenching, devastating. Like I cried multiple times. I didn't cry. I don't think I cried when reading this, but yeah, so I did enjoy it. I do recommend it, but it wasn't at the top of my list. Next book that I read was The Woman in the Window by AJ Finn. See that little bite mark there? That would be this little boy. Some of my books have dog pee. Some of my books have dog bites, you know? It just is what it is. Life of a dog owner. So this is another one of those um, thriller, psychological, that word I can't think of, like takes place in the home type books. This is about to be a movie. I actually want to Google when that's coming out. I think Amy Adams is slated to play the main character, which is super cool. And so it's about this character who lives alone in a New York City apartment and she has agoraphobia, which I don't know if I like know how to define that just in one sentence, but she's basically like extreme, like has extreme anxiety about like leaving her house or talking to people and everything. So she's a therapist, but she works from home and she's basically been like pent up in her house for I think a year when this starts and so one of the things that she does is she like kind of spies on like her neighbors and not necessarily spies but kind of like that's just what keeps her entertained and gives her a, a literal window to the outside world as she kind of checks in on her neighbors and so on and so forth and so a new family moves in across the way and they seem kind of shady and kind of suspicious and one of them, like, like first the mom of the family or like the son of the family rings her doorbell one day and like interacts with her. And then like the son or the, the wife rings her doorbell and they end up like having this big talk. And but it just seems really like suspicious. And then one day she's looking in the window and she hears a scream and then she sees what looks like a crime happened, like like that the woman got hurt, stabbed, something. And so then she launches into this whole thing where she's like trying to call the police and trying to like get people to believe her. She also has a tenant that lives in her house with her, um, like in the basement. And so she, like he's one of the characters. She is estranged from her husband and her daughter. She's not estranged from her daughter, but she, knew her, she and her husband are like, 
separated but she talks to them on the phone and like okay so I really liked it I did and I have to preface with saying like I was kind of in like in a weird stage of my life when reading this so I felt like I was probably a bit distracted um but I didn't find it as captivating as like oh my gosh it gripped me as like The Last Mrs. Parrish or like a couple other books that I read this year but I, but I did quite enjoy it. It did grip me. It was well written. And then there is a really interesting twist in this book. But the the twist didn't surprise me. It didn't grab me as much as I feel like it should have only because of another book that I have read before in my life. I'll just keep it real general like that. I don't want to spoil anything. But there's another book that I have read before where there was a similar twist. And so because of that, I already kind of I didn't predict it, but I think I like considered it as a possibility and I kind of like, you know, so when it happened, I was like, oh, wow, but it wasn't the first time I had heard that twist, you know? Um, did I rate this book? Okay, I would rate this book maybe like a 3.8 or 3.9. Like it was good for sure. Um, I would recommend it, but I wouldn't reread it. And the last book I'm going to be talking about today was one I checked out from the library. I'm trying to save that coin. This is called The Wicked Deep and it's by Shay Earnshaw. I had heard about this book on I think like a, I don't remember who, so I apologize, but it was like a book specific YouTuber. And I was looking for kind of like spooky, cool books to read in October. Flash forward to the library, didn't have this until November and now it's December and I just finished it. But, um, it is the story of three sisters who were alive 200 years ago in a small town in Oregon. Funny because I live in Oregon. And the town accused them of being witches. And so they were drowned in the harbor, blah, blah, blah. Well, flash forward to like present day and these witches or these sisters return every summer to this town and essentially they kill young boys. Um, so that's not really spoiling anything because that's like, I'm pretty sure that's like literally on the back. Maybe it's not, but <laughs> that's not a spoiler. So that happens and you are the, um, narrator of the book is a girl who lives in the small town and her dad actually has been missing for like a year and like she talks about that a lot and she talks a lot about like so these kids are in high school oh yeah let me back it up this is a YA book um and I would rate it maybe a 3.5 or a 3.6 um I liked it but you know it is a YA book and I feel like as much as technically like Hunger Games and technically Harry Potter and some other things are YA books like and I love those certain YA books really come with like they very much are very blatantly young adult does that make sense like I feel very like okay I'm a 30 year old reading this and like these themes just aren't doing it for me so it was like a little like young adulty too young adulty at times overall I liked it the storyline was interesting it was well written there's some romance in there. There is, so the, the girl lives on the island and, you know, her dad has gone missing and she believes in this curse of the Sparrow Sisters and then this new boy shows up on the island um, one day and he just wants to research all that he can about this curse because his brother was killed the year before and he believes that it was from this curse and, like, my dog's playing with toys um or peeing on books I don't know so it kind of it kind of was sad I finished it last night and I felt like I was like kind of sad but overall it was good I do think it was like a fun spooky like it would be like a good Halloween time read and again it's a young adult it's super easy to read so it could just be like a quick fun log cabin night you know weekend away during October type book but those are my books that I've recently read. I plan to get back into the swing of like book reviews. Let me know if you like 
individual book reviews or if you like a breakdown like that where it's like these are the three or four or whatever books that I've read in the last few months. Let me know down below. Let me know if you've read any of those books and what your thoughts are. And I will see y'all next time. Love you. Bye.